Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to do a disassembly for repairs and maintenance on the Spectrum Arms SAJ71 Core AK74M. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do consider liking, commenting, subscribing because those interactions help me get seen by the YouTube algorithms. That helps the channel grow. The link to your link down below in the description will take you to all of my socials, including my Discord. Stop by and say hello. And if you want to click the join button down below, that will take you to channel memberships, 99 pence a month equivalent in your country. Uh, custom videos, custom giveaways, more of a say in the channel and your own private chat section with me on my Discord as well. So we're going to waste no further time. We're going to get straight into the disassembly uh, of this. So I already covered in the dis uh, the unboxing how to get rid of uh, the muzzle brake and expose the 14 mil uh, thread under there. We shouldn't need to access that now. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to lift up this little lever here. So we're just going to flip that over and that's going to release um, this uh, sort of upper handguard. We can get that out of the way. Now there is a little oval spring on here. You can see it here, this little, get the focus. I apologize if autofocus is doing me over here. Uh, so this spring, this is the orientation. So that butts up and this like sort of metal plate keeps it compressed to uh, keep it from wobbling too much. In the lower handguard then we've got a little lever that's just here and that swings over like that. That's locked, that's open. At which point then this front part should I might need to be. Now they sometimes wiggle out, sometimes, there we go, look. So the pin comes out, and then at that point, then this front part just wiggles free, and we can take the lower handguard off, just as simple as that. Put that out of the way. Um, sometimes in these builds, you need to pull down on the gas rod and just slide it out. Sometimes these are threaded at the end and sometimes screw into something in there. On this one, that, that's uh, how it goes. Now, we're getting to this point here. I'm gonna flip this round. I'm gonna lift this up and off. We need that out of the way. We're gonna remove the charging handle assembly. So I'm just gonna push this metal rod forward and that brings the button with it. And that just flips over and it comes out. And what I'll show you is how that looks. So that charging handle assembly, the rod just slides into that hole and into that hole and it sits on that spring and that's how that works. Nice and easy. I don't want to fire that across the uh, thing. Now this is more the, what we, we generally, or I refer to as the VFC style of, of disassembly. So if this was a Tokyo Marui style disassembly, you'd have four screws there that you would undo and this front end would tilt forward slightly and come away. The VFC one is a little bit more intrusive and we've got to sort of knock a few pins out of here uh, to get access to the rest of this. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch this pin out of here, um, which then should allow this to move forward. I'm just double checking, I can't see another pin. That appears to be a mock pin. That normally is a pin, but it doesn't appear to be. So I'm just going to nudge this pin out here. Probably take that off camera just so I've got the leverage. Now for this, I'm going to use, I've got a, like a Torx 10, so I'm going to use it as a flat, you know, just a flat surface. I've got some punches somewhere, but we've not all got all those tools. I'm just trying to show you, you can use other things. So that pin doesn't want to go anywhere, despite the quite excessive force I've put on there. But I have just noticed that there are four, four hex bolts here. So I'm just going to remove those and see if that, um, if that actually releases this front end. So I am going to use, it is not a 15. It is a T10. So I'm just going to remove these using a T10. And I suspect that might be slightly different. Right, that's not releasing anything at the minute. 
Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release these two screws here and these two underneath as well. So I'll just loosen them up, I'm just gonna lift them up and out because they're not, uh, there's one. There's two screws underneath. There they go, there's one. There we go. Now. Okay, so a little bit of funning about. So we've got there, this plate it is metal. Uh, it's basically, it's got four screws in it here to fill and remove the screws. That then basically releases this outer barrel, which then comes out. You can see the gap in the barrel there where it bolts down. And then you've got the hop unit there, which I've spun around and slid out the other way. So we'll have a quick look at this first. So the hop is fully on. Now, I was impressed with the range, but that hot rubber is not entirely straight. It looks a little bit misaligned. Might be me knocking it about. So I've just twisted the barrel slightly just to bring it into a more uh, level positioning. But that is the full adjustment. I only needed about half of that to hot 0.25. And I was genuinely impressed. Now, um, somebody on my Discord, Anzu, did not suggest it might be the flat rubber that's in that doesn't look very flat to me um so i wouldn't count on that I'm just say this particular one didn't have that next thing we do is going to remove the selector so this wasn't very tight and i am going to need my needle nose pliers later to tighten that back down because it was excessively loose so that just comes out the selector lifts up now it might bring no so there's the selector we've got this little sort of like cam that's got a brass ring in the middle now what we'll do is we'll discuss this properly uh, when i put it back in because there's a specific orientation and then the blanking plates coming out uh, i've got a phillips head underneath i can already feel the gearboxes coming away there is the screw on the other end the screwdriver there's the pistol grip a little bit of dirt or something with it nice and i'm going to keep it horizontal like this so i'll just carefully lift it out because these are going to fall off because they're, they're not held on in any way so there's our body again you can see it's nylon because there's a fair bit of flex in that but it's pretty damn strong there is our specna orion gearbox we'll discuss this assembly when we're reassembling i'm just going to lift those off for now uh, and I'm going to just pull on that. Might need to get a flat head down the side of it there. Oops. Now this is a version three gearbox and people often ask me why, well, why can't I put a version three in my M4, for example, because version threes are by design sort of a much stronger design. Now, basically, a lot of that is down to that they are not necessarily just um, the different shapes and sizes. So a version two, a version three gearbox is not in a format that will fit into an M4. And it's not like it's an iterative design that is just getting better, but you can still mount it in anything. It is more about the, the size and the shape that fits different things. So in this uh, style basically we've got a version 3 that is um, pre predominantly built initially for the AK but we find it in like MP5Ks, G36s, uh, the um, UMP um, has a version 3 so I'm just going to disconnect that again I'll talk about these don't worry too much yet about these um, cams and things I'm going to discuss those at the point of reassembly we're going to disconnect these two screws here to get the motor out of the way and that plate should might need to use a flat head i'm just going to anchor that on there 
and I'm just going to pry that off. I'm trying to be careful, trying, being the operative word there, to not um, split and damage wires. So to that end, I'm just going to pull them out from under there. Put them back afterwards and I can just slide that off. That is an important part, do not lose that. Right, now we're going to remove the motor. Generally speaking, those two motor screws are the same size. Occasionally I've seen them be different ones. They are the same size on that one, just leave those there. That motor now will just come away. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the quick change spring. So push in, quarter turn. And there is our spring guide and our spring. So it's a linear spring, which means that basically the, the pitch of the, the coils is all uniform. There's no like sort of tighter pitching anywhere, which is what we've seen sometimes in, in what we call non-linear springs. So there's nothing really, you know, to worry about it's just the type of spring that they've used so i'm now just undoing the screws these typically tend to be a variety of sizes so i'm just keeping them in the right order and you can see there's two different styles of heads here so obviously just keep them in the right order so you know specifically oops where they've come from and then we can roll that up and away there is our gearbox internally so the motor is going to come as well so the uh, grease has just been basically daubed about um, there is an attempt to shim it and it's metal bushings not bearings in there not not that i've ever said that it was anything else we've got a metal piston which is covered in a bit of grease uh, so metal tooth piston second tooth is uh, cut down a little bit just going to turn that to get those teeth out of the way. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is this. There we go. Um, this then is our cylinder assembly. So we've got an air nozzle on our tappet plate. So this gear here pulls the tappet plate back. That lets the BB up. This comes back forward before the piston finishes uh, and basically seals the BB into the chamber against the hop unit. The piston comes back, it's released off these teeth, it slams forward, pushes air out the front and pushes your BB uh, through the hop unit and out of the barrel. So in terms of um, the piston then and the cylinder, we're going to see what the air compression is like. So I'm going to hold my finger on the end there. Now it can go in, but there is resistance there. So it's not the greatest, um, uh, which I wouldn't necessarily expect with the, a plastic air nozzle. Um, if you want better air seal, there are things that you can do for that. Um, but there is some air seal in there and it is an, an unvented cylinder as well. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to reassemble this and hope that this trigger assembly doesn't fire out. And we have to reseat the very greasy and to reverse a latch. So this anti-reversal latch, hopefully you can see, there is a little spring arm there. That spring arm sits against the side of the gearbox and it pushes this lever against this gear to stop our gears unwinding. Um, basically, once we finish, stop firing uh, because otherwise it can uh, create issues and it just sounds a little bit funny. So I'm just gonna put that in. So what I've done is I've just seated the anti-reversal latch. I've twisted it and held it open with my fingers. Um, there we go. Just trying to get it as tensioned because they are notorious for pinging out and hopefully the trigger's not moved either. So I'm now just going to roll this on from the front. I'm gonna just wiggle it about a little bit. Now at this point, I can see the trigger's not quite seated right. So I'm gonna wiggle that and that's dropped into position. And then I need something with a thin end and I can see that this gear and the anti-reversal latch is not seated quite right and something's not there we go it was the trigger no something's still not seated right so 
something is not right in there. I can tell because it's not going flush and staying flush, it's springing about like that. You again, trigger. And to reverse a lot. Right, something has come dislodged. There goes the trigger. There goes the interfersal latch. One time's ahead, everybody. Here we go. So that's in place. So the trigger then. So you've got two parts of the trigger. So it anchors on this front bit here. And as you pull it, this part here gets pushed back like that. And what we have is we have a spring that sits like that on here. Now what you'll see is there's a tiny little hole. Um, let's see if we can spot it. So there's, a there's two circular holes there for those two pins there. And there's a little tiny gap in the corner just up there where the little short post, that little short post will sit. So I'm gonna seat that first. Like that. And I'm going to drop those in together as a pair. So I'm going to put the front one in first and the back one. Right, I can see that they're in there and I can see that that's working. Pulling the trigger. Right, next. I'm going to set the anti-reversal arch. I suspect that mm, yeah, that wasn't in. Right, reset that again. Right, grease absolutely everywhere. I'm going to roll that on again from the front. I'm going to do hopefully the same. That's on at the front. The anti-reversal latch has disappeared out of existence. There it is. There's so much grease that it's actually sticking. Let's try again. So if that goes on there, that goes on there. That goes in there. That goes in there. Okay. Let's try again. Here we go. Pistons in its runners. go so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this back on there we go that keeps that on then I'm going to bring the rest of the screws in so I'm going to start at the back this time and work with me forward now for some reason the parts I wanted to uh, push it open a little bit it's not massively worry as long as it's going flush shut we're all good next one So I'm going to bring this around now. I'm going to put those two 
motor screws back in. So just click that into place. There's one. There's the other. Perfect. We can bring the spring guide back in and the spring, we just wiggle those in, in, and it's a quarter turn. Shouldn't matter which direction until it goes flush. Now you should really be using uh, some sort of large scale hex head, which is that one. That'll do. No, use the next one up. So for this, I've got a T40. There we go. So it locked into place now. So the two things that would come out of there, the two lugs are now horizontal, locking it in place. Uh, I'm just gonna click the wiring back in under these clips. That's nice and securing it out of the way. Now we're going to reassemble the rest of the uh, plates. What I am going to do before I forget, because I always forget, is that blue clip is just going to go in there. And the wings of it. I'm just going to click in like that. So next thing, we've got this selector. This is our selector here. So when we're moving the selector, we've got safe, auto, and then uh, semi as well at the bottom. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in this part here. So we're going to drop that in and the teeth need to marry up like that. So the um, one, two, three, four teeth of the selector need to sit in the four teeth gap of that. I'm going to flip it over. We're going to bring in this side now. And it's important that these go on this specific order because they're slightly different uh, gears. I'm going to screw that down. Now, sometimes when you tighten this, this one down, it can make the one back at the other side jump teeth a little bit. And if you find that you get to the point of reassembly and your selector is not quite as it should be in terms of firing modes, just come back and check that those teeth are all married up nicely. And then the other part is this one that we're going to do now. So we've got this part here. So it's got two sides. It's got a circular post and it's got a rectangle post. The rectangle is going to sit down into that gap there and slides like that. And the circle one's exposed. We're going to bring this in and the teeth are just going to marry up again, look like that. And if I roll it, you'll see there's a you know a matching tooth. So I'm just going to bring this down to I can anchor it on there. And what I've done is the circle post on that one is sitting in there and the teeth are married up there. Now I know I've got safety and that is the correct setup. So checking, yeah, everything's ready. So now we can drop this back into the gearbox. Now, looking in there, we don't need to worry. I was going to talk about wiring, but it's cut out enough that there's wiring is not an issue. So we're just going to drop that gently in there. If at any point you feel like it's under a lot of pressure, you're, you're having to force it, then there's something not seated right. You need to think about that. So we're going to locate that as centrally as possible, like that. So you can see that little connector hole there, properly as, as sort of square in there as possible. What I'm going to do is then I'm going to bring this little connection net back. Now, on the top side, there is just two straight edges. On the other side, there's a straight edge and a notch in the top there. That notch is gonna go for that little catch bit there. So it will only go in and you should find it quite easily just drops into that position with little or no trouble. Then what we do is we bring the selector in and the selector sits on top like that, in that orientation. And then we're gonna bring this in and screw this down. Now, for now, I'm gonna finger tighten that. But what I'm gonna do at the end is I'm gonna get my needle nose on it and just crimp it off a little bit tighter. And it does need to be checked that regularly because they are notorious for coming off. Then I'm gonna bring the pistol grip in and slide that up and that should just need manipulating about and it should sit flush. And you should get access to the motor screw in there. 
hole, no screw hole. So I'm just going to drop that in, find those threads, tighten that down. There we go. We've now got selector and motor grip in there, still on safe, so everything's still where it should be. That's good. Next thing we do is we're going to bring in, I'm going to drop that back in. So this sits in that orientation. So that just drops in there underneath and it sits, it will sit further back, but uh, at the minute we want it to be a little bit forward because we need it to uh, accept the hot back into it in a second. Surprise it's going to go. So I'm going to push the hop fully on. I'm going to slide the hop in like that until I can drop it into position. Now it might be at this point, I need to lift this bracket up. And what you might need to do is you might need to just push back slightly on that blue nozzle just to get the hop unit back into place. Now this isn't ideal typically, I probably should have, um, in hindsight, probably should have um, um, left this in loose and seated this first to give it a bit more room and things, but we did what we did. We're here now. I'm going to screw these back in shortly once I've brought the outer barrel in. So I'm going to bring the outer barrel back in. I'm just going to put that on at the end. Remember this little square gap here is where that, that sort of latch thing sits. So I'll comes back in it's now flush that's as far as it goes which is where it should sit flip it around i'm going to bring the latch back in again there's no preset direction for it to go in it doesn't matter which way around it goes i'm going to drop that back in there i'm going to bring my t10 in and i'm going to start just getting it down now at the minute it's just working its way down those screws. Whilst I'm keeping it pushed back. There we go. It's just dropped into place now. So I'm just going to keep screwing those down. One tight, two tight, three tight, four tight. That's now secured down. Now I'm going to bring the barrel um, hop unit screws in. Now there's two different screws here. There's the, I'm guessing I want a cone head, and then there's I think pan ahead, I could be wrong. The domed ones. The domed ones are the ones that go in over the top. And the idea is of this whole unit is that they are securing the uh, hop unit to this plate. This plate then is screwed in and it secures the hop assembly backwards to the uh, front of the gearbox to help maintain your air seal. So drop that in there and tighten that down. So flip it over and the cone ones There's the holes look. So then the cone head, I think the cone heads, I apologize if not. I'm going to then screw those in from underneath till they tighten down. Again, I went backwards until it clicked into the threads. There should be no forcing it into any sort of threads. Lock down. Um, there are little nuts in there now it looks like they're glued but just in case a little nut appears from somewhere that's probably where they've come from is in there um so i'm just going to extend the hop hop adjuster back out again because i want it fully off so i can reset it and the next part is i can bring in the cover 
In fact, we need the charging handle assembly. We'll do that in a second. We'll do the, the lower handguard first. So I'm going to move this forward. I'm going to bring in the lower handguard. Just it literally just clicks in position. This slides into place. I then bring in uh, this latch. I'm going to have it fully open to push it in, and then we'll flip it over to lock it in place. That's now solid. I'm going to bring the upper handguard in and drop that into place, making sure that this lever is fully open there. So that drops into place. The lever just swings shut now. That's going nowhere. Should sit there. That's going nowhere. We can then bring the gas rod in. Like that. Just wiggle it about until it slides back. And there you go. It should lock behind the muzzle brake there. Charging handle assembly then. We're going to drop it in at the back there. There we go. Just dropped it in at the back. Slide it all the way forward. I'm going to bring the rod and the button in. They're just going to click and lock into that locking mechanism there. Then we can bring the top cover in or cover in, dust cover, whatever you want to call it. And that's it. We are done and dusted and you have disassembled and reassembled for repair and maintenance this uh, Spectrum Arms Core AK. I hope that's been useful to you. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm slightly even more impressed with the build quality overall um, than I was just from the unboxing. So please do remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.